first question um, come in. How do you know what your evaporating temperature should be? And that will be posted on the screen very shortly. So how do we know what your evaporating temperature should be? Well, that, that really comes down to what product you're actually storing in your um, cold room. So let's say you want your cold room at sort of plus two, for example, then you would be evaporating around about minus five. That all depends on the relative humidity of the product that you've got in your cold room. Um, and that is quite sort of sensitive um, depending on the product that you've got in your store. So let's say you've got uh, fresh fruit, for example, you want a nice high humidity so we don't dry the product out. If you want a nice high humidity, um, basically you want quite a small temperature difference on your system. Um, if you've got uh, dried fish, for example, you want a very low temperature difference. So we don't want to dry that product. We don't want to, uh, you know, make that product moist. So it all depends on the product that you've got in your store and the humidity or the relative humidity that you want within your uh, cold room. Um, there are many, you know, books and pieces of literature, depending, uh, that will explain your temperature difference, evaporating temperature, etc. Um, generally, if you want something like 80% uh, humidity, and I'm just looking down at some uh, the, the notes that I've used over the years, if you want something like 80% uh, humidity, you want roughly 8 to 9 uh, Kelvin difference between your evaporating temperature and your room temperature. If you want a very... Um, a very low relative humidity, then you want something like a, a 10K temperature difference. So if you had a room of plus five, you'd be evaporating at minus five. So you've got that 10K difference. Um, so that answers that one, hopefully.